So how many people could we effectively move down this canal on a daily basis? 40,000 people per 40, day. 40,000 per day, yeah. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Life Size City YouTube channel. Hope you're doing good. Me, I've been thinking about waterways. I'm consulting on a project regarding waterways, so I have been spending time delving into my archives, looking at all the stuff that I've gathered, you know. Sometimes you have like folders and you just feel like a hunter-gatherer because you just put all these documents in there and hopefully they will nourish you <laughs> later on. And uh, sometimes it pays off because you realize, whoa, I got a lot of stuff in there. So I've been looking in uh, the archives about waterways in cities. As part of my research, I have been looking at a lot of the different episodes of the TV series, Life Size City. The segments we've done in various cities regarding waterways. It's not a primary theme in the series, right? But it is something that we see in many places. How waterways were developed often centuries ago and uh, now they're just sort of forgotten. Nobody knows what to do with them because all the money went on to the to the, you know, the road transport and all the goods are being moved by trucks and, and even trains and stuff. There are countless kilometers of waterways in cities around the world that are underexploited in the modern age. Filming in Paris, I interviewed a woman who ships goods from the farms outside of Paris all the way down the canals that were built by Napoleon for exactly that purpose. And She's a lonely woman with her crew on that canal because nobody else is using it. And she said it's just kind of a, you know, nice little schadenfreude, yeah? When she passes the ring route around Paris, the Peripherique, and it's just traffic jam in the morning and she's just sailing freely down the canal. And then when filming in Milan, I discovered, wow, the city has this amazing network of canals. Some of them even built by Leonardo da Vinci back in the day. Many of them were covered in the 50s and 60s to make roads or parking for cars and now the current administration is uncovering them, bringing that water back to life in the city. Not just for the aesthetics, having nice waterways going through neighborhoods, but also <laughs> improving the conditions for flooding, which was part of the function of these canals when they were originally built, and then they covered them over and they ruined everything. So it has a dual purpose, well, probably multi-purpose, uncovering these canals, like we've seen in cities like Seoul, in Utrecht recently, the Danish second city of Aarhus, digging out those waterways and putting them back to their former glory. For a few years, I worked on cycle logistics, using bikes and especially cargo bikes for last mile logistics in cities. Looking in my archives, I discovered something that I myself designed and had completely forgotten about. I don't know what else is in those archives, man, but this is a solution for a river or harbor city. Cargo bike terminals. You have a micro distribution point somewhere outside the city center and you use the canals to get the goods up to these architecturally designed cargo bike hubs. You dump off the packages there for that neighborhood and those businesses and cargo bikes just keep doing loops, picking up packages and delivering them and you can have them all along the harbor based on your needs, on the density of the neighborhoods. This was just a way of, you know, forcing the waterways back into use and also in the process getting a lot of trucks and vans out of our cities. No brainer, duh, we did it for centuries and it's time that we did it again. And while I have you here, while I've sucked you into my YouTube lair, I just wanna remind you to please subscribe to the channel, like this video. Every time somebody subscribes, a stolen bike is returned to its owner somewhere in the world like that. It's an amazing thing. So thank you for being a part of that. So hop on the back of my bike, and let's go to Bangkok and see a simple solution that could have immediate and far-reaching effects for transport in that city. This is a city that is sorely lacking in basic transport options. They've placed a lot of money on a last century horse, the automobile. There's a couple of really badly designed train lines that don't connect up very well, and still they're over capacity. The people of this city are desperate for better transport options. Now the problem is, of course, worse for people living in poorer and more remote communities. Ironically, the people of Lat Prao see a solution to an important issue every single day in their own backyard. 
Yang Yonglong has documented this community's project for better transportation in a book called Handmade Transit. We are on La Prao Canal, which run north and south. Normally, if you take the car in the morning, like rush hour like this, it would take more than two hours in traffic. You get stuck here. But we have experimented with some boat transit. It takes less than half an hour because the boat is traffic free. How many people live in this neighborhood? Each household is around five people. Okay, like 50,000 people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. There's our ride, man. All right, I'm getting in. The need to get to work faster has pushed locals to create their own makeshift water bus with a cargo boat. They're breaking stereotypes in a city that generally associates boats with the lower classes. But things haven't always been this way. With more than a thousand canals, Bangkok was once named the Venice of the East. Over the past decades, however, this amazing network of waterways has nearly been forgotten. With an increasing population and simply no more space for cars, people are now turning back to the canals for transportation. And that is exciting. How many kilometers of canals are there in Bangkok? Almost 2,000. But not all of them are usable. Some of them are pretty small waterways. Yeah, we just passed one back there. Yeah. It's super narrow. Right, but we have surveyed around 34 canals that are usable. Yeah. There's a lot of canals that are intersecting BTS lines. Right. Yeah. Intersecting are very important because if it goes parallel to the metro, there's no need to open it. Yeah, right. But if, if it intersects, then you, can, you should connect them. Like, for example, you have two piers, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's just one connectivity. Mm -hmm. Maybe this one is a metro. Yeah. But if you add three more pier, you don't increase the connectivity by three times. You can in increase it much more. It's exponential. You increase it by 10 times. Yeah. Just by adding three knots. So how many people could we effectively move down this canal on a daily basis? 40,000 people per 40, day. 40,000 per day, yeah. You can see that on Sansap Canal, which can hold up to uh, 60,000 people per day. That's actually more than the, the new Purple Line MRT that just opened. That completely blows my mind. These existing canals are proving to be more efficient than an expensive new subway line. But not everyone sees things with the same pragmatism. We're illegal right now. We're uh, illegal. We're not okay. supposed to be running boats in, uh, without a license. Is that how it works here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's uh, Somebody gets an idea and it develops and then they go upwards? Yeah, it, it, for the case of motorcycle taxi, yeah. for example. It started out like community leader driving illegally, taking passenger from the end of the alleyway to the main street. That's actually a really efficient way to get around Bangkok. Actually, I've understood. It's, motorcycle taxi, if you look closely, it's a BRT system. Yeah. Uh, it has a lane between the car, right? Yes. Yeah. A, a, and that lane is traffic free. <laughs> Even when you're stuck, if you, you stuck, get stuck infinitely, yeah. the motorcycle taxi can still zigzag along the car. And it's the largest BRT system, actually. Um, we have over almost four to six million people per day. That's great. BRT. Bus rapid transit system. But with, with separated only, lanes. Yeah, with only one person. <laughs> it was, yeah, but still, <laughs> when you got four to six million people using Collectively, that. it's a BRT system. And so this canal hopes to become a legal way to make life simpler, like the Sang Sap Canal did, but with the help of the community who will benefit from better services. Having to work outside the, the system constantly creates sort of a rebellious culture. That culture of debate, argument exists in, in these kind of community. But when you go into the established system, it's more like a culture of respect and obedience. Mm -hmm. The innovation, interestingly, yeah. is in the street, yeah. because the culture of argument foster and, and nurture innovation in the street. Now, are the policymakers receptive to that? Actually, they are right now. Well, there's a lot of local media attention to, to what he's doing. Uh -huh. This canal will connect you to the new metro in two years. Imagine this area. Yeah. Economic activity will be enormous. Yeah. Yeah, we have a bazaar, you, know, yeah. you can have breakfast sellers. Yeah. And this is right in the middle of the city. It feels like a different world. Wow, sort of a green belt, the forest. In the future, if you can commute to work like this in a more enclosed boat, it will be nice. Yeah. So the metro station will be here, right? Perfect. Oh.
hub yeah. right here. Right. You have your river transport. There's also a road here. There's motorcycle taxis. You got a marketplace. This is the village that we have had for 7,000 years. Right. All in yeah. one spot. And there you have it. Feel free to share in the comments if you know of other waterways in other cities anywhere in the world that have a lot of potential but are being underused. It'd be kind of cool to sort of see some places that I don't normally think of every single day regarding waterways. Fire away. Now, Christmas is coming, so I'm just going to plug the other book. You know about the Copenhagen Eyes, right? The book, it's in Polish, it's coming in German. But then there's this little, this little freaky little book I wrote last year. A short introduction to bicycle urbanism for people who don't give a fuck. There you go. Perfect stocking stuffer for uh, the people who will hate bikes the absolute most. We all know them. Man, we got it in Portuguese, it's in German, Turkish, Dutch, Italian, and Spanish. I will link in the description to where you can get that. It's a self-published book, so you can just sort of hop on in and buy it there. That's it from me for today. Michael Koval Anderson is out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.